Hello and welcome back to the Eyes of Old Gaming channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I have another older game in my What Is It and Is It Worth It game review series. In this video I will go through the various aspects of the game, trying my best to avoid spoilers for new players, and give examples of similar games as well as my personal opinion as to whether I would recommend the game with a thumbs up or thumbs down, and if I personally enjoyed it. I won't be giving a number rating to the game, as many other channels do, as I find this to be a very arbitrary way of rating games, which like any other entertainment is completely subjective, and instead I prefer to give enough info for you to make a decision on your own if you would like to go forward with picking up this title for yourself. When humanity sets the world on fire and poisons the air, the last bastion of safety is underground. Today we take a look at Metro Last Light. Specifically, the gameplay shown and review of mechanics and features will be regarding the Redux version, which was released in 2014. However, the original game was released in 2013. This one was developed by 4A Games and published by Deep Silver, being a direct sequel to the game Metro 2033. I'm happy you're here to join me as we take a look at Metro Last Light, trying to remain as unbiased and spoiler-free as much as possible so we can determine together how well the game holds up today, and if it's worth picking up for a first-time player. While we also try to answer the most important question we search for in these video review showcases, is this game worth it for you? Make sure to stay till the end of the video if you're interested in a more subjective look, as I'll discuss my own experiences with the game. Metro Last Light is a sequel game being a direct sequel to Metro 2033. Players who have already played through that game will have a very good understanding of what to expect in this one. Also, although you could just jump right into the franchise with this title, I would highly recommend starting with the first game, as this will give you a greater insight into the story, atmosphere, and mechanics involved in the game. For those not familiar with 2033 and would like to jump straight in with this one, essentially it is a post-apocalyptic first-person shooter taking place in a supernatural horror-related setting. I wouldn't say this strictly qualifies as a horror game, rather it takes place within a world that is built around a supernatural sort of sci-fi horror atmosphere. In other words, though you might get a couple jump scares through the main campaign, don't expect this to be a typical horror trying to scare you and keep you on the edge of your seat with tension. Mechanically, we're looking at a first-person shooter with combat at its core. Although it shares many characteristics of a typical shooter game, it does have much to set it apart and has unique mechanics built in. The customizable guns, for example, will allow players to tailor their experiences based on what they choose to go into the fight with. Last Light also works stealth and survival into the gameplay, though in a fairly light format. For the most part, survival elements are going to boil down to having to actively look for resources such as ammo and air filters in the game world. Personally, I didn't find it difficult to stay well stocked throughout, and although the game is really quite linear with an expected path to take, I do recommend a fair amount of exploring the branching pathways to ensure that you have enough supplies to make it through to each checkpoint. Aside from this, don't come into it thinking this is a standard shooter experience. There are a ton of cutscenes and story-heavy sequences built within the game to break up the combat and shooting. Really, it feels like a fairly even split between combat situations, cutscenes or non-combat story sequences, and exploration of the level environments. The graphics are a bit of a mixed bag. The environments, atmosphere, and tone which is set through the graphics are all really quite good, even when compared to newer games. The NPCs at times can look a little off, and there are some blocky moments in cutscenes, but really overall everything works pretty smoothly. Lighting in this title is done exceptionally well, and really creates a great mood or tone for the game to be set within. Aside from what I've already covered, with regard to unique features in the game, we do have an emphasis towards stealth gameplay. It does seem that the game attempts to encourage sneaking and stealth. However, when I played, I actually found that the human NPCs have similar AI to the previous game, meaning that they do not behave in a way that presents much of a challenge. 
Essentially, they will just keep charging you like a bunch of thoughtless drones. And I mostly just walk through each zone with ease, being able to take out enemies in direct combat. This actually may be why I found that looting was not much trouble, as when you kill a human NPC, you can often loot them for any spare ammo or other items that they might have. After each engagement, I either came out with more ammo and resources, or at least balanced with what I had going in. Monsters are a totally different story though. The relentless charging style AI works much better for them, as they do seem to have little regard for their own survival, and if enough of them are swarming you, it can make things rather difficult. Also avoiding combat with monsters is probably more advisable than human NPCs, as they have nothing to loot from their corpses, meaning any ammo you burn through to take them down will need to be replenished by other means. One other thing to mention is there are two separate endings to the game with one being the good option and one being the bad option. Unlike 2033, you won't have the ability to affect the ending once you get there, and the particular ending scenario you get will be dependent on choices you made all throughout the game. sound was pretty good when taking into account the general environmental noises, including weapons or interacting with different elements throughout the game. I played the game in English and found that the dialogue can be a little awkward in some places, which I assume is attributed to things not being possible to translate in a 100% coherent way, or even some jokes or references not really translating that well or making complete sense to someone not familiar with the culture. Personally, this didn't really bother me during my playthrough, and the delivery of the dialogue was generally... okay. And thus, our incredible show continues. Today, I have the honor of presenting to you the hottest, the most explosive act this side of Atlantic Ocean, the most scorching spectacle of today, our fire show. A round of applause to welcome the performers. Please! Please! So what would I compare this to? Well, obviously Metro 2033. Being a direct sequel, many of the gameplay aspects and mechanics are going to be nearly identical. If you played and enjoyed this one, I would say it's fair to say you will like Last Light. By comparison, however, I did feel that there was more story sections in Last Light and less combat. I would also compare this one to the Bioshock franchise. It has a similar dark vibe and first-person shooter gameplay. The big difference will be Metro's unique atmosphere it builds, as well as being more linear feeling than Bioshock. Also, we do have a similar feel and vibe as the Stalker series. There are clear gameplay style differences, but the similarities will show themselves in the general world building and aesthetics within the game. So now that we've looked at some of the features of the game, we reach the point of my review where I give a more subjective look at my personal experience with it. Please keep in mind that the following is just my opinion of the game, and if the features and genre seem interesting to you, you should definitely check it out for yourself, as not all games are for all gamers. The game that you hate might be the next gamer's all-time favorite, which is one of the things that I love about gaming. There's always something for someone out there. And now for my opinion of whether or not I enjoyed the game, and do I recommend this one? Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was pretty good. Honestly, I preferred this go around more than 2033. I felt the story was stronger and the overall game was more alive and I felt more connected with what was going on. 
2033 was more of an action shooter by comparison to Last Light, and I felt I enjoyed the more story heavy gameplay this time around. For me, this is a better direction for the franchise, as I personally don't think the shooting in combat is as strong as many other first-person shooters. It's okay, but the human NPC's AI is very poor and does not offer much of a challenge when going into direct combat. The stealth feels kind of tedious and is not as rewarding as many other stealth games, and some actions just feel too clunky for you to feel like you're an actual smooth stealth operative. Generally, I just went in guns blazing into each encounter with enemy NPCs, and I didn't end up getting killed much at all taking this approach. Keeping in mind I'm a fairly mediocre first-person shooter gamer, this means that most people should also find combat a breeze as I did, whereas more skilled players will find it no challenge at all, relying more on the story building to keep you interested and playing all the way through. There are some different difficulty levels and modes to choose from though, such as a hardcore mode which will buff enemy health and make them harder to kill, but it doesn't seem to change their AI or tactics, which makes it feel more like an artificial difficulty rather than actually making the game more challenging. Then of course there are the ranger modes which Metro games are famous for, and they make the game more immersive by taking away some game convenience mechanics such as limiting HUD. However, this will either feel immersive or frustrating depending on your approach to the game. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Metro Last Light. Have you already played through the game? Let me know your own opinion of the game and whether you agree with me or if you had a different perspective on it. Either way, I hope you found this informative or at least entertaining. And if you can let me know you enjoyed it with a thumbs up, that would be greatly appreciated. Please also consider subscribing to the channel for more gaming content. I create and upload a variety of different videos related to gaming, and would be very happy to have you join the community and help direct the future of the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch today, and until next time, take care. Our dear audience, this sad moment always come, no matter how often we wish you would not. But our show for today is over. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed your company. Thank you, and please come again. <laughs>